Arsenal versus Liverpool, top of the Premier League against third. It's a monumental game. It's a massive game for both Arnie Schlott and Mikel Arteta, who today have both said they are expecting players to miss this game. The big question for all Arsenal fans, will Bakayo Saka play? Whereas Liverpool have got a few question marks. Who will be their striker in this game? If you're new to the channel, please make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We are less than 1,200 subscribers away from the big 30,000. Make sure you go down and drop a like if you haven't already as well. This is a huge game in the title race. And I've said before, uh, and I've said this recently, actually. If Liverpool come away with the three points this weekend, that's a massive, massive, massive gap already in this Premier League season. Liverpool will be going into this game confident, confident. Four points clear already of Arsenal with essentially a fully fit squad other than one injury, which we're going to get to in a minute. Whereas Arsenal going to this game with Saliba banned for a suspension, Timber, Bakayo Saka, a doubt. Of course, no Martin Odegaard. Calafuri is a doubt as well. And there is a lot more pressure for me on Arsenal to go out there and get the three points. And I almost feel like rival fans are already writing them off. Could we potentially see a similar performance that we saw against Manchester City where they are happy to sit back and defend and get them on the counter? Whereas Liverpool go into this game, I think 11 out of the last 10, 12 games has been wins. They won in Europe. Everyone's saying, you know, who have you played? You haven't played anyone. Well, they got past Chelsea. They got past Leipzig. And I think, you know, as much as you can criticise and say you haven't really played anyone, at the same time, you should be able to give credit to say whoever they have been in front of other than one slip up against Nottingham Forest, um, they've come away victorious. Now, you look at the Premier League table. Manchester City have a favourable fixture against Southampton. So they'll be looking at this game thinking, hmm, if Manchester City probably will take a draw out of Arsenal versus Liverpool, which would put Manchester City, if they win, on 23 points, Liverpool on 22 points, and Arsenal on 18 points. So they would go um, five points above Arsenal. And, of course, uh, they would go one point above Liverpool. If Liverpool win, they would go on 24. If Manchester City win, they would go on 23. Um, and, of course, if Arsenal lose, they will stay on 17. If City... Um, win Arsenal, win a Liverpool draw, Liverpool would still be above Arsenal by one point and they would drop down to second. Um, Arsenal would be third still and Manchester City would go first. But I want to talk about the injuries. Um, I want to talk about what Arnie Slot has made on his comments over Jota. I want to talk about what Mikel Arteta has said with regards to Bakayo Saka. Fabrizio Romano has tweeted out in the last recent hours Will Saka be available against Liverpool? Now, to a degree, I think Arteta is playing mind games. I think even if he was available, I don't think he would tell the media. Um, and he said, he's done a bit of training on grass. How far can we get him to Sunday? That's a different question. Um, we have another day, uh, which is a good thing. We will see. Now, of course, Bakayo Saka did not feature in Arsenal's 1-0 win, uh, win over Shakhtar Donetsk. Um, in which was a um, it was a win, but it wasn't the most comfortable for Arsenal. Now, if Bakayo Saka is not available for this game, I think that will be an absolutely huge, huge challenge for for uh, Mikel Arteta. He's also been asked uh, about injuries so far this season. He says we don't feel sorry for ourselves; face it and go for it. And I like that approach from Mikel Arteta. He's not feeling sorry at the fact that Mikel Marino got injured during his first training session. He doesn't feel sorry that Martin Odegaard's been out. Um, and the last question that he was asked today in his press conference was uh, Arteta on Saka, Calafuri, Timber against Liverpool. And he said, we are going to do our very best to somehow have them available, but it's very, very uncertain. And he's renowned for naturally paying his cards very, very close to his chest. Now, Arnie Schlott was asked, I believe, earlier or even yesterday, might have even been this morning, regarding uh, Diego Jota and the Federico Chiesa. And he said, Diego Jota will not be available for 
Arsenal. Federico Chiesa might train at the weekend. Let's see what happens with Connor Bradley. So I think the front three for Liverpool could be something along the lines of Darwin Nunes, Luis Diaz and Mohamed Salah or Cody Gakpo, Luis Diaz and Mohamed Salah. So there are some injury news. You know, um, Arteta hasn't given any clear indication that Bakayo Saka will play, whereas Arnie Schlott has immediately, immediately ruled out that there will be no Diego Jota. Now, I want to start by talking about what I think the lineups will be for both sides. This is based on my opinion, if these players will start. And I want to start with the Liverpool lineup. And I think this Liverpool side is all about control under Arnie Schlott. We know that. You know, Ryan Gravenberch has been one of the best midfielders, not only in the Premier League in Europe this season, is a defence that has barely conceded um, any goals whatsoever. They've only conceded, you know, three goals in the Premier League. Luis Diaz, Mohamed Salah, both on very good form. I think Darwin Nunes will start up front for them. Of course, he did get the goal um, against RB Leipzig on the Wednesday night. Now, this midfield three is, is where the game is going to be won or lost for both Arsenal and Liverpool. Curtis Jones had a really, really good game against Chelsea and then was on the bench at Leipzig, which essentially tells me that he probably will start. I think he will go McAllister in the 10 and Gravenberch to Jones as a kind of double pivot. The question, I think the back four essentially picks itself. Robertson was on the bench against Leipzig as well and Trent... Um, Virgil, Canate, Robertson, Kelleher essentially pick itself. Gravenberch will play. It's just that front three. If it's not uh, Darwin Nunes, it may be Cody Gakpo. I don't necessarily think Chiesa is the fit to play. And the only other change you could maybe make in midfield is take Jones out for McAllister and play Soberslai. You know, Arnie Schlott will want to go to the Emirates and, you know, control this game. Know that Arsenal are a little bit weakened due to their injuries and doubts for players and suspensions the likes of William Saliba. So he will fancy his chances. And this is where we're going to really find out if Liverpool can cement their confidence and go and get another three points. And just to say, look, we aren't here just to, to take part. We're here to compete for a Premier League title. I don't want to say Arsenal season could be over if Liverpool win, but it would be a huge blow to already be seven points behind top of the league, just only nine games in. Now, this is what I think the Liverpool team setup will be like. I think their game plan will be control the game, control possession, nullify um, Arsenal, for, you know, stop them from counter-attacking and essentially, essentially stop them getting any set pieces. I think it's a strong Liverpool side. I think they've got pace, you know, uh, breaking teams down with Diaz, Darwin Nunes, Salah. You've got the you've got the absolute monster midfield of Ryan Gravenberch and you've got one of the best defences in the world right now in that back four. So, it's a strong enough side. I think they've got more than enough quality to go to Liverpool. Um, uh, sorry, to go to Arsenal and get the job done. I really think at this moment in time, it, it, it's a huge, huge game for Liverpool. And I think there's a lot more pressure on the line for Arsenal. So I think Liverpool can kind of go with a bit of more of an approach and a relaxed play. This is what I think the Arsenal side will be. Now, you've got to hear me out of this because this is based on if I think Timber will play and what I, I like what I think the game plan will be for Mikel Arteta. Now the huge question mark I have over this game is is who plays at left back? Because if Calafuri's not fit, Robertson um of course you look at the difference between Bakayo Saka going up against Robertson where it potentially could be Mohamed Salah going up against Zinchenko. And we've seen in the biggest games that matchup before, which has cost Arsenal. Now, do you potentially go Timber at left back, Ben White at right back, and maybe play, dare I say, Declan Rice in the back four, and then maybe drop Kai Havertz and play Trossard in up front? It's a huge, huge, huge headache selection for Mikel Arteta. Now, if they do play Zinchenko, I think Mohamed Salah will 100% fancy his chances. 
The midfield three, I think, will be the same sort of midfield three that played against Bournemouth, which will be Thomas Partey, Mikel Marino, and Declan Rice. But that back line, if Timber is unavailable, I, I and Calafuri is unavailable, which we've all kind of saw, then I, I, I'm scratching my head thinking, and if Bukayo Saka is unavailable as well, I don't know who Arsenal are going to play. Do you potentially put Trossard out on the right? Martinelli has got to play this game because Liverpool are going to have all the ball and his pace on the counter is what's going to be Arsenal's main threat. Havertz has got to play as well. He's got a very good record this season at the Emirates. Declan Rice has got to play to try and control that midfield when they're in possession, right? It's just, if Bakaya Saka doesn't play, you put Trossard in there. But if Timba doesn't play, do you potentially put Ben White at right back, Declan Rice at centre back, and then maybe bring Havertz into the 10 and have a double pivot of Thomas and Marino? Or do you bring, it's a huge, huge risk, do you bring Wanyeri into the team? You know, if you look at the bench from that Arsenal side that played against Shakhtar Donetsk, there wasn't a bundle of quality on the bench due to these injuries. You know, if you look at it, do you bring Jorginho in? I'm really trying to control the game. But then I, I, if I was an Arsenal fan, I'd worry about the pace of that Liverpool midfield. Jorginho, Marino, I don't think you play style in this game. I think you bring him off the bench around the 65th minute. Do you bring Louis Skelly in at left back? You know, he's one that come on before Zinchenko. So do you maybe go him at left back? Um, and then maybe Ben White at right back? With Kivior as another one, that option they've got. It's it's a, it's a headache selection. If Arsenal have this fit team that I just brought up on the screen, if Saka is fit, if Timber is fit, you know, if Zinchenko plays, I think it's going to be a very close game. I think you will see the same tactics that we saw Arsenal play against Manchester City. The first goal in this game is absolutely huge. And no fixture in Premier League history averages more goals than Arsenal or uh, Liverpool Arsenal or Arsenal Liverpool. That midfield of Arsenal, it, it, it could be a masterclass from Arteta or they could get dominated by Gravenberch, Jones and McAllister. You also look at the Liverpool squad. Other than Jota, they have got a fully fit squad. You know, I know... They've got a couple of injuries. Harvey Elliott is still out. But they will, they will 100% fancy their chances. Um, 100%. Like, I, I, I look at it right now and think where this Liverpool team want to be, where this Arsenal team want to be, this is a, a monumental game. Both teams have got to win. There will only be one. I'm going to sit on the fence right now and say it will finish 1-1. But I'm also going to caveat that and say, if Liverpool play this game up against an Arsenal side with no Saka, with no Timber, with no Calafuri, then I think Liverpool will come back with the three points. Um, and of course, you look at the run of games Liverpool have got coming up with the likes of Bayer Leverkusen, Manchester City, Real Madrid. If they can win at the Emirates, that will be three games down on their big run of games. They've beaten Chelsea, they've beaten Leipzig, and they potentially could be beating Arsenal. Not only that, if Aston Villa win, if Brighton win, if Chelsea win and Arsenal lose, they could be as low as sixth. And if Tottenham get the right result, which I think we will against Crystal Palace, we would only be one point away from Arsenal if Liverpool get the three points at the Emirates. So it's such fine margins. If Arsenal get the right result and get the three points, they would be one point away from Liverpool. You know? I've got no doubts that Manchester City will comfortably go and blow um, Southampton away. And I think Erling Haaland could potentially get another hat-trick. You look at Liverpool's fixtures they've got coming up with Arsenal, with Brighton, with Brighton again, with Leverkusen, with Real Madrid, you know, with Aston Villa in there. We're really going to see if this Liverpool side have what it takes to go and win a Premier League title. For Arsenal, it's all about getting your players back. It's all about getting Bakayo Saka fit. It's all about getting Odegaard back in the team. Saliba, when he's back from suspension, this run of games is when we're going to see what Liverpool are made of. I generally can't wait for the game. I think it's going to be 
a fantastic game of football. It's going to be based on the fine margins. You've got no doubt VAR will be the talking point again. Make sure you let me know your score predictions down below. Make sure you drop a like, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. I am 